So how many of you people work at a school? Excellent. Okay, that's, that was predictable. Um, so I'm going to take you through a little story of how to start school differently. Does that make sense? Because this is, oh, well, I'll get, in, I'll get into that later. Okay, so this is, what I, this is our first activity. Do you guys know what a Freyer model is? If you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm pretty big on Freyer models. Invented by, invented by Dorothy Freyer in the late 60s, okay? And so we're actually going to make this into a group activity. Now, this session is really built to be hands-on. The way I like to do this session is as if this was my classroom, right? It's not going to work out because of the physics of the space, and it's also Doug Robertson's fault. Um, so I want you guys to go to this page right here, tinyurl.com for a friend. I want you to imagine that you're in this class. You're going to work with the person that's next to you. If there's not a person next to you, this is going to be awkward. So you need to find a person that is next to you. And what I've done, I've used through the magic of technology, I have made this, what we normally do on paper is this, I've made it into a Google Form. So you should be seeing a Google Form right now. Is that sounding about right? And then I'll start, the questions are in the Google Form, so this is the part where I need to stop talking and you guys need to start talking. Because I'm trying to move from a one-to-many model to a you guys are learning by talking to each other model, but I'll give you guys a quick breakdown I want to, look at this aggressive learner here. She's like, I'm doing this. So the, the things you're going to ask your neighbor, describe your classmate. What did they look like? I'd like four pieces of information. And as, if you see on the Google form, it says, don't say they have brown hair. So like, uh, you, you want unique identifiers about them. Don't say they have freckles. We want to go a little farther. The next thing you're going to ask and talk to them about are what are four things they do like? And uh, for example, favorite foods, favorite teams, favorite movies, favorite bands. The next one is, what are four things they do not like? And the last one is, now on the original it says draw a picture, that's not gonna work on a Google form, so I just changed it to describe their dream pet. Now there's a group of people that always need to know what does that mean? That's up to you guys. Describe your dream pet, this is your chance. This is your chance. So uh, guys in the booth, can I put, can we, I'm gonna put some music on. And I just want you guys to talk to each other and work on that. Yep, it is tinyurl.com, Freyer a friend. So start talking to each other, you guys. And then I'm going to switch over to the Google form here. Could, could I get this information this quickly on paper, you guys? No. A uh, little teacher tip while we're transitioning and people are finishing up. Um, how many of you that, uh, that have been or are classroom teachers, when you, it, you take that leap of saying, we're going to have open-ended questions, what's that mean to your grading time? Right? Boom. And what I realized the other day, it's, such, it's just a small little teacher tip for you is, if you have kids doing open-ended answers in a table or a spreadsheet, they're so much easier to grade than when they're in a stack of papers. It's so much faster. So watch what I'm going to do here. Look at this. How long would this take if they was all handed in? I would look at one thing at a time, one thing at a time, one thing. Now we can just scroll down. And I want to meet Johnny Bigbeard. I do. I hope he's in here. So Johnny Bigbeard, but I'm gathering all this cool data about kids in my class, right? Oh, I see likes. Oh, like John Carippo. That's good. All right. Who? All right. Good job, Katina. I couldn't do that if you guys were working on paper, could I? So this is that subtle advantage that technology gives us. For time purposes, are you guys seeing the patterns though? We're finding out a lot about people here. Midwestern accent. What's that sound like? Who's the Midwestern accent? Joe. Joe Sanfilippo. He's out here from Wisconsin or some state in that Midwest thing. Uh, let's take a look at um, Dream Pet. Let's see. Horse. Good old-fashioned. Okay, Black Lab. I could say good old-fashioned. A little beagle named Maya. So who wants the beagle named Maya? Do you already have the beagle? The, the pet you have is your dream pet. Can we get a round of applause? She's the first person that has owned her dream pet. That's cool. Um, Samuel L. Jackson riding a snake. That's a divergent answer. Unicorn does not want a pet. The dream pet is no pet. Any parents in that group, right? Every time the kid wants a pet, you're like, no, we're just not doing that. Hairless, noiseless, and never hungry pet. 
One of my favorites from the summer was Permanent Puppy. Okay, geneticists, there's your mission. A dog that cleans up and feeds itself, a dog that doesn't shed smell or crap, a corgi, a dragon, or a phoenix, you know, kind of whichever. Um, her dog, Oni. So somebody else, that's a new one. We've had two people claim their own current pet as their dream pet. A seahorse, regular size or big? Regular size seahorse or big, like rideable seahorse? <laughs> See how we just changed that? Yeah, that's everything. How, oh, unicorn pegasus. I learned this this summer. So uh, one guy put in, his answer was alicorn. And I was like, what's an alicorn? He goes, it's a pegasus with a horn. I was like, dude, how do you know that? 12-year-old daughter. <laughs> okay, so the point of this activity is what, you guys? We're getting to do what? We're building community. We're learning how to talk to each other appropriately, right? That's, that's how I'm going to start my language arts class, because that frayer activity is also a mad set of skills for doing vocabulary, for doing keywords, for organizing. So what I'm doing with this is I'm training kids how to think like this and give me multiple good answers as we get to know each other. Does that make sense? So that's one of my little smart start activities. We're going to go on to the next one. Now, this is, was originally built to be a two-hour session, so I've modified a few things for time purposes. So now we're going to go on to the next one. So that activity from my little smart start is called Frayer a Classmate. It takes about 20 minutes. Typically, I like to do it on paper because I don't want to go too deep on technology right off the get-go. But that is what I do instead of, a uh, let's say, an acrostic poem. Anybody guilty of that? Not a lot of academics coming out of the acrostic poem. Looks great at back-to-school night, but you don't really get to meet the kids. Um, these are lots of ways to connect. We could, in a standard classroom, I could have put all the unicorn people over there and all the non-unicorn people. There's a lot we can do with continuums and getting kids to meet each other on a different level besides this. I play football, you play football. We can be friends. There are other layers of friendship besides just your sports things you do at school. So the whole idea is this is to start building a classroom community really quickly with these fun conversations. Um, you can have kids vote on the favorite picture that they've drawn in their group. We don't give any points for art. Stick figures are okay. But that's now what kids are doing is they're presenting on the fly. I'd like to tell you about my friend's alicorn, if you don't know what an alicorn is. You see where that's going? But it's getting kids standing up, presenting, talking right off the get-go. And... Uh, we, we want to make it a light experience. So if you're scaring kids into sharing their alicorn, that's not going to end well. You've got 179 days to go. This is just the first day of school. So you got to, some kids are going to punt because that's where they are comfort level-wise. Um, here's the next one for us. Uh, okay, so here's examples of Freyers filled out. Isn't that better than writing a sentence? Like, how many of you guys have, had, have done that as a student? Copy the definition. This is a true story. I was in Atwater about 2004. I'm in line at the Pee Wee football game. I got my teacher mode on. I hear two boys behind me. What do you do in history? We copy down the bold words. The other kid goes, yeah, us too. Is this better than copying down the bold words? A lot better. And here's the other cool thing. If you have access to devices, you can just give kids the key word and let them use this thing called the internet to fill that in themselves. You don't have to tell them what it means. You teach them to find it on the internet. And one thing that I do to break the copy-paste cycle is I make kids do this first on paper until they get good at it so that they can't just copy-paste the definition. So here's a couple more examples. Insects, getting a little more technical now. Um, you can see essential and non-essential characteristics, examples, non-examples. This is a much better activity for kids than just copying the bold words. You guys seem completely stunned and amazed by this right now. Okay. Um, here's another. Here's a math example. That's a pretty cool example for third and fourth grade, right? Guess what else? Parents will never call you and say, what's this crazy common core stuff you're doing? Right? That's good, solid, fundamental skills that would make a really nice independent practice or homework piece for kids. Really doable. You don't have to use worksheets from the manufacturer to teach kids math. I don't know if that's a breakthrough for you guys, but we can teach math without manufacturer-based worksheets. Okay, here, we're going to no, 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 do another one. I need you to read up on the screen, and then we're going to do another group activity. This one's called Dogs and Cats, and uh, it goes like this. So this is the dog's diary. 
Look for patterns. Anybody seen patterns? Notice the structure of the way it's written. Now, if you like this, you can just Google dog and cat diary, and you can get this yourself, but you don't need to right now. Okay, so we've seen the dog scenario, correct? All right, now here's the cat's version. I'm just going to give you some time to read. I love when, kid, when, when my students laugh chorally. Right, I know they're at the same section. So how many people have hit the vomit, right? But wait, there's more. The cat has some issues. Now, if you're a kid in my fifth grade class, what do you think that this year is going to feel like? This is going to be cool, right? We're not just going to be reading the anthology all year. Okay, so for time purposes, I'm going to move on. You're going to need this, so if you Google cat and dog diary, there's about 20 different versions. When I saw this on Facebook, my head just exploded. I was like, I just found the best Venn diagram activity ever known to humankind. So what we're going to do right now is I want you guys to work in groups of four to five for this one. How many people have used Socrative? How many people have not used Socrative? Good, you're going to learn something cool right now. What you're going to do is go to Socrative.com, and when it asks you the room, Caripo Q. Hint, don't sign up as a teacher. You're going to be a student for this one. And then I'm going to, I'll show you guys the activity. On Socrative, all I have to do is hit start, and now I'm going to start seeing real-time answers. There's the information you need. So you go to Socrative.com. I'll adjust that a little bit. Socrative.com. When it asks the room ID, you put Caripo Q. And there are, I believe, four questions there. What I want you guys to do, I will show you in just a second. So are you guys getting logged in to Socrative? You can work in teams here. Again, this is way more ideal for smaller groups than this. The next part of the session will be way more conducive to this environment. Look, at, we got some go-getters already going for it. How nice would it be if your grades graded themselves, you guys? How nice would it be if you knew who had answered immediately, you guys? That's pretty cool. So that's what Socrative gives you. The questions in there are pretty straight ahead, but basically, as I alluded to, it's basically just going to be a Venn diagram. This is what I do with kids on paper. Give me four things unique to the dog, give me uh, four things unique to the cat, and three things shared by both. If you need to refer back, <laughs> what is so funny out there in Gridley? <laughs> um, if you need to refer back to the article, just look up cat and dog diary. There's a whole bunch of, of hits on that. If anybody needs tech support, just make eye contact with me. Move out to your area. Really? Do you really, or are you just, you just taunting me? I got nothing to do for a minute, so this is working out great. Caripo? Caripo Q. So a great clarifying question. Unique things from the text, not just the picture. But for today, I want to be that, you know the guy on Saturday morning that had the fro, the art teacher? There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. I'm lowering your effective filter right now. Don't write really long answers. We're going, we're going for time right now. Yeah. What would the dog do? Short answers. The dog's answers would be like three words, right? I love this. <laughs> this is the best test ever. Okay, again, for time purposes, in real life in my class, I would give kids about literally five minutes. I'm really big on timers. Do it now, do it now, do it now. Are you guys familiar with Parkinson's Law at all? Parkinson's Law, if you want to look it up on Wikipedia. It dictates that all work will expand to meet the time given. How many of you have heard this in the teacher's lounge? I don't know why they're not done. I gave them plenty of time. You can't do that. My motto is panic now. I literally tell kids, if you're going to do the essay on Sunday night in 20 minutes, let's just do it now in 20 minutes. I'll give you the weekend off. Just do it now. And then we do more reps, and then the skill gets higher. So I'm going to start revealing what we're seeing in Socrative. If you haven't used Socrative, I think you'll really like this. 
Look at this, you guys. I'm getting real-time feedback. I can tell how my kids are doing, and this Chris guy is just totally blanking. But maybe he's just thinking more, so that's okay. So this is what I like about Socrative. And I can hide the student responses, so I can just see who's finishing and who's not finishing. I do that by clicking Show Student Response. Or if I want to dig in deeper, I can click on one, and it'll give me a breakdown. 96 kids in the Socrative right now, that's pretty good. And then I can go back to the results table. Oh, I played a dirty trick on you, which, is, which answer is correct on five. There's just multiple choices. That's right. That's right. So that's what Socrative looks like, you guys. Will I be grading this tonight? Not really. I, I know the answers right now. I know how we're doing right now. So I don't, and this is one of my favorite Alice Keeler inspired jokes. Does anybody have a cart they take home on Friday night? I'm going to grade all this stuff. And then Monday morning, I didn't get around to it. It looks good in the parking lot, but I'm not really doing it. I think if you're grading stuff at home, you're not doing it right. Kids need feedback when? Right now. Can you imagine coaching a sports team like this? I'll tell you guys how, how practice went after the game. And probably you're going to do really crappy because my coaching is rigorous. That's, that's senseless, right? Okay, so what do you guys think of Socrative for 96 kids? What was my grading time on this? And like I was talking about with the tabled response, I can, I can see patterns really quickly. I can see patterns really quickly here on what's going down. It would be very different if I had 96 pieces of paper stapled up on my desk to see the patterns of the learning. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm jumping out of the Socrative and I'm jumping back into the slide deck and we're gonna go a little faster now. So um, if you like those activities, just go to Oprah's page, tinyurl.com, smart start your school. I'm not gonna leave that up for a long time, so if you lose it, just track me down or tweet me, I'll give it to you. But can you imagine starting your class with two activities like that next Monday or next quarter? What you're doing is you're giving kids academic type of practice, but it's about them, and then you can build it in intensity over time. What if your whole school started with activities like this? What would the change, what would the effect be on your school? So I'm gonna start telling you the story of this now. Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time. time tinyurl.com slash smartstartyourschool, or just Google my name and smart start. Either way, it'll pop right up. Okay, do you guys, anybody know what this is? This is fun. It's called a cargo cult. You guys heard of a cargo cult? Okay, this is awesome. Uh, so I learned this at the Apple Institute in Miami this summer from a guy on a side conversation. In World War II, visualize kind of a Gilligan's Island island, right? All isolated, no technology, no nothing. And then the Americans show up and they have these things called planes. And what happens when the planes land? Cool stuff comes out. But then the war ends. So no more fresh supply of ice cream or Coca-Cola or radios. So in the South Pacific, there are actually things called cargo cults where they build fake runways and airports hoping that the planes will show up. I'm going somewhere with this. So they think that if I build a bamboo plane and I march around like soldiers, that planes will show up with all that cool stuff that they used to bring. And that's called a cargo cult. So here's, everyone else is building a fake runway. I will help you to build it or you won't attract any planes. Guess what's happening with some of our technology rollouts? XYZ District bought a bunch of iPads. XYZ District bought a bunch of Chromebooks. If we buy a bunch of technology, everything will be... You can insert several words there. Okay, different, cool. So I'm worried that we're doing some cargo culting in education right now. So here's, here, and I want to give credit to this guy, uh, J.L. Soria. These are not my, these next slides aren't mine. Seven habits of a cargo cult people. Does this seem like your current technology rollout? So just because one big district rolls out 
devices and doesn't implode, does that mean it actually worked? Here's another example. Failed to identify the cause of an outcome. And what we see is, I'll use another, another technology. If we only had interactive whiteboards, my class would be more engaging. Right? Let's go back to the early 90s. Oh, my God, if we had accelerator reader for every kid, school would be so much better. Here's another one. Rooster crowed, sun rised. The rooster made the sunrise. We're doing a little bit of this in technology right now. Ignore how the practice actually works. So it doesn't matter how many bamboo planes you have. The Americans aren't coming back because the war is over. We're on two totally different, two totally different storylines here. It's not about the airport. Um, this is a good one. Notice the binoculars. It looks cool to look through binoculars, but the caps are on. When you go to move your school forward is the equal blend of culture and technology. You can't just add technology or you're a cargo cult. Try that out on your ed services department. If you just add technology, kids will cheat faster. Remember the kids who fill in the blanks? They will farm that out. You fill in the blanks this week and copy paste it and send it to me. I'll do it next week because I have technology now and I'm in a cargo cult. I'm gonna do things that look like learning and hopefully the scores will go up. Here's another one. They will bully more. We haven't been able to stop kids from bullying, right? We have cameras on the buses. Do, they, do we still have bus incidents? We have yard duty teachers. Do we still have bullying? We haven't been able to stop it. When you give them technology, all you're doing is giving them the ability to speed that process up, to bully with more people. So how do you fix that? Culture. How about this one? They will be more distracted. They will be more distracted. Now, here's one that my friend noticed the other day. They had an outbreak of kids being on YouTube all day, right? Oh, they, they're using up all the bandwidth. They're distracted. You know why the kids are on YouTube? Because Pandora was blocked. They just wanted music. Cargo cult. So what this teacher did was set the kids up with a playlist every day. See the difference? So instead of saying, we're going to turn YouTube off, they just identified that the reason they were on YouTube was they wanted, who, who listens to music while they work at home? Oh, but at school, you have to work in silence, right? And I've gotten to the point where uh, when I do yard work, if I don't have my headphones on, I'm totally wigging out. I'm like bored while I'm weeding and mowing and stuff. So if you don't get culture and technology fixed in your school, you're going to accelerate the things you don't like right now. You're just going to give the kids the tools to do those things more rapidly. So that's kind of what this whole session is about. What are some of our first three memories of the uh, first memories of the first week of school? Well, the first week of school, you're still in the honeymoon period, right? Every kid thinks they're going to get an A. Every teacher thinks it's the best class ever. Check back in March. <laughs> um, how long does the honeymoon last? And that's part of the idea of this is let's extend that honeymoon. Now, this is what I remember from 1971 or two. New pencil box. And one of those. I don't know what it does, but they make me buy one. And then every year by February, it's destroyed, and the kid sitting next to me has broken it into two pieces, and he uses the pointy part to kill flies, right? So we don't actually use that in school. It's a little cargo cultish. Um, how long does, the, how long does the, uh, the honeymoon last in high school? It's even shorter in high school. High school, it might be over at noon. Uh, you can get two or three good weeks out of the K-8 kids, right? Um, so back to the honeymoon period. This is the way I like to start school. You turn blooms on its head. And we did a couple of those this morning, right? Instead of saying, like I was teaching film for a few years, and instead of saying, the next four weeks we'll be teaching you the grammar of film. You need to learn all the vocabulary and then go through my camera safety course before we make a video. You'll finish your first video around Thanksgiving. It's the first day of school, you guys. So this is how I started doing that. Do you guys have phones? Get them out. Here's a list of shots. Start shooting. It's film class. Tomorrow, we will put those shots together into a music video. The kids are like, what's the script? No script. Just shoot the shots. It'll be good. By the third day of class, my kids have already made a video. Do you know what the halo effect on that is? They think I'm actually a good teacher. 
It's a trick. It's just a lesson design trick. I'm not any better than any of the other teachers. I just started with sewing a project instead of building up to a project. So I really like this graphic, not my graphic, just Google Images. But when you start with creating, you start building relationships with kids, you start moving in close with kids, you start seeing what they're capable of. It's very different than, once you've finished writing your script, I will give you a camera. The average boy response to that is, you will not be getting a script anytime soon. And then I will blame you for my bad grade when my mom asked why I got a D. So here's my reality of the first week. My, J my name is J-O-N. Somehow that's always Jan. I don't know. Um, I'm Jan. I don't have any friends. I have two yearbooks at home that are completely pristine. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I literally went to the yearbook line after school. They gave me the yearbook, and then I walked home. It took me about 20 years to recover from that, but I'm doing okay now. And then what is, what's, what's the first thing coming? I'm going to have a test on Friday. Read chapter 5 through 7. It's going to be important. I can't wait till Friday. You don't know my name. I have no friends, and I'm going to fail. Yes, I love this. So we, when we started up a new school a few years ago, we reimagined that. I'm going to show you guys that in a second. How about this? This is the way the handbook goes. Handbook, 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 handbook. I need them signed by Friday or you're losing 20 academic points. Have a great week. Do we read them? No. Cargo cult. If I pass out handbooks, behavior will be better. Think about it. The more you think about it, the funnier it is, right? Because guess what the kids are doing at home if you're a parent? I need this signed by Friday. What's in it? I don't know. But you better sign it. Cargo cult. Um, common nightmares. Anybody have the locker nightmare? I can't remember my locker combination. A variation that I have. I had this one three nights ago. Uh, I haven't gone to this class for seven weeks and the finals tomorrow. Right? Anybody have that one? <laughs> uh, why do we have those nightmares? Because I think we have deep-seated lizard brain level events that terrify us and they reappear for the next 40 years. Another good one is uh, nightmare. Again, I was famous at Fresno State for buying the Scantron in the class during the test. I'd be like, Doug, you got an 882? He's like, yeah, I got, I got five bucks. I didn't even know I was supposed to bring a Scantron. So I'm having, I have long-term PTSD from testing. Uh, other things, we, we know this from our, um, our uh, uh, CLAD training, what happens when the effective filter is raised, learning goes down. But during the first week, it's go for it. Terrify kids. Don't smile till Christmas. We totally violate everything we've learned in the cultural realm. And so we minimize our academics. So back to the story. So this is the school that Mike Niehoff and I got handed um, in 2009. Uh, 340 acres, 500 kids. We're like sharecroppers, 1.4 acres per kids. And this is what it looked like on the outside, and that's what it looked like on the inside the first day. That's the library. And this is our first staff meeting. It's in the construction trailer. And notice the construction guys turn cell phones off. And I'm like, dude, this is a digital school. <laughs> what are you talking about? So that's our first staff meeting in the construction trailer. So the fun part of the story is I realized that it may be that the school wasn't open for the first day of school. You know what I'm saying? Because like the gym wasn't even started. So what we did was we rented a local convention center. Has anybody been to Bass Lake, California? There's a place there called Ducey's. They rent us, rented us their convention center, and it looked like this. And I have the audio down right now, so that's okay. So we're doing like the Mustang spell out. These kids haven't even been on our campus yet. We did the first four days of school off campus. So that first four days of school ever wasn't even on campus. And what we realized was that we had a chance to build the culture from scratch. So we broke the kids into groups of about 12, and they went around and the teachers presented right off their laptops. No projectors, right? We, they just presented right off their laptops and we would rotate the kids around in groups and every day you'd be in a different group. Do you know what happened after four days of that? Every kid knew every teacher. Almost every kid knew almost every kid. That's a pretty cool way to start a school. One of my side theories is it's easier to bully strangers than people you know. So if everybody knows each other, doesn't make it impossible, but it does make it harder. So we were trying to break down these things that I already talked about. 
Everybody knew each other. Kids would be going to the bus on that first Friday going, Crippo, I made 100 new friends this week. That's a pretty cool reaction for a freshman in high school. Um, and we didn't do any academics. I'll get into that in a second. So a different approach was group, a group approach to everything. Um, no academics the first week. Now, that Venn diagram activity that we did, was that academic? The Freire friend, was that academic? But none of this kind of academic. No talking about you'll have an F, right? The, our motto was if you do all the activities, everybody should have an A at the end of the first week. Yeah, 10 minutes, okay. I only have 70 slides. And then people had 100 friends. So we would teach the handbook. We would break down the handbook into 12 slide presentations. And they would go whole school. Entire school would be talking about these things at the same time in small groups. We taught the handbook. We would go four, five, or six weeks without a single suspension the first few weeks of school at a 500 kid high school, right? So this was, there was a huge payoff on this. And like, we didn't talk about apathy, we talked about indifference. Indifference and apathy are kind of the same thing, but when you phrase it this way, kids don't know what you're talking about. So we talked about, you like Tom's shoes, you like recycling, you like hybrid cars, let's extend that to your social life. So we're actively pitching to kids to step up and be better people school-wide for the first couple of days. So for the first three days, day one, two, and three, the first half of class was school-wide um, team building. So everybody would be doing one of those activities school-wide. And then the second half would be um, teaching the handbook school-wide. So we just kept doing that for a couple of days of school. And that depends on if the first day of school is Tuesday, and then there's Friday or Wednesday, we would move it around. The, the, and then we would do things like marshmallow challenge, we would have, when I was in Mariposa, we had countywide marshmallow challenge the first week of school. Every kid, every class, every school. And then at lunch, the best teams did a rebuild at lunch because we were teaching ID, uh, iteration. We're actively practicing iteration. And the best part was that the kids would build in the morning, rebuild at lunch, they're all excited, it's a fun day, and then we would show the entire student body countywide the Marshmallow Challenge TED Talk. Now remember I said no academics? So we didn't do a district writing assessment, but we did have the kids write some of their memories of what happened, so we snuck up an assessment in that first week while they had a high amount of buy-in. If you like that, then you like the Global Cardboard Challenge. It's inspired by Kane's Arcade, another cool culture building story. These are actual pictures from a friend of mine named Marlena who had her kids building these fun little games in her class. You wanna talk about the cultural impact? About three weeks after they did this, one of the student's aunts came down with terminal cancer. This was the class reaction. That was their choice. Do you see what I'm talking about? And what Delane was talking about? These are better people, by the way. When she was out uh, with me at training this week, three of them got thrown out of class. They're not perfect. <laughs> but they know, <laughs> they know how to dial this up when they need to. And that was really huge. Um, there's a bunch of cool projects, called, uh, one's called projectofhow.com, where you have activities pre-built. Because what a lot of things teachers will say is, I don't have time for all those activities. Go get them at the website. John Crippo, Smart Start. I've gathered up a ton of them for you guys. Um, if you go on SlideShare, 10 slides, you guys, 10 slides. Every high school kid in America should memorize this slide deck, right? Let's give them some real life skills the first week. Um, here's another good one, Teach Thought. They have a whole bunch of activities. These are all on the website, so you can go get them. The next two days, we did tech training. How many of you heard a teacher say this? Oh, I'd love to use blank, but I haven't been trained yet. Oh. So what we did was we made a bunch of little things called app mixers, and they look like this. Have all the kids open up iMovie. They will figure out how to turn the camera on for you, right? You don't need training. Just make sure their camera's on. If they don't know what to do, have them ask a neighbor. Yeah, it's funny, but it's true. And then every kid does this. They have four minutes to ask as many kids as they can. And the, the key sentence is, my favorite superhero is. So somebody's going to say, my favorite superhero is Superman, Spider-Man, Supergirl, whatever the variations are. And then we show them this slide, drop the clips in any order, trim them, add favorite music. Boom, your whole district is now trained in iPad, 
iMovie production. Everything after this is just more, but they're functional how fast? 20 or 30 minutes, right? And if you're in a one-to-one -one program, that night they're gonna go home and do what with iMovie? Open it up and play with it. That's the advantage of one-to-one -one, is they have the device at home. Um, here's another example. If you like edgy creations, have the kids draw an avatar themselves, make three slides, take a picture of three classmates' avatars, one picture per slide. What's your favorite kind of shoe? What's your favorite kind of song? So if you're familiar with uh, edgy creations, one kid's talking and says, this is my friend's picture, and this is Kim or Mike or whoever. Their favorite shoe is and their favorite song is. This is going to turn into homework later. This is how they're going to do their math homework. They're going to say, hi, my name is Bob, and I'm doing question number five. And you're going to do this and this. So I'm training the kids on how to do it, but they're also getting to know each other. Does that make sense? Super efficient and building a really good path, and every kid could get an A in this. Um, so embrace the mess. So the power of paradox is switching from assumption to knowledge, from insecurity to confidence, from negative stress to positive energy. This is our plan for the first week of school. How many of you have human children of your own who spend all summer being worried about next year's teacher? That's not okay, you guys. That's why they're going to have weird nightmares later. We can de... We can de... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? We can remove that negative energy. So the results, by the end of our first week of school, we had 500 kids. Every student had done a podcast. Every student had made an iMovie. Every student had made a keynote. Every kid had done multiple presentations. What can I do for the rest of the year? Pretty much anything I want now, right? You could substitute whatever you want. It could be every kid did Hour of Code, every kid blogged. Take the eight or nine things you want to focus on school-wide and do it. Imagine the end of first week, every kid's done a short presentation. That's a pretty good way to start the year. And then thousands upon thousands of connections. Uh, we also have a super safe learning community. Teachers were now connected to kids. Teachers know kids better. Um, kids are connected to kids. It's funny to see what kids like certain pets or certain sports teams, and they form whole new fan groups around that. Oh, I didn't know you like Lord of the Rings. I like Lord of the Rings. Let's talk at lunch. Whole new groups. I call that de-stratifying. What I don't want to see in the room is skaters here, cheerleaders there, Aggies there, sports guys here. I don't want to see that. I want to see groups of people that um, permeate the room and work together on the fly because that's the modern workplace. Correct? All right. Wrapping up here. Little fun thing called Kanjabi Kangan. We had water day to end the first week of high school. Kids would fall asleep in the library. Notice that her phone is actually out of her hand. That's a really, that's a big moment. Um, water day, they don't care if they're in street clothes. The bus drivers loved us. We had pirate day. Uh, we had the day before Christmas break, all the teachers cooked all the kids pancakes and waffles. And then kids started doing it. Cargo cult, positive cargo cult. Kids started bringing each other pancakes on their birthday, because that's what we do around here, right? That's when you know you're really winning. We did white elephant gift exchange school-wide. You know that ugly hour and a half right before Christmas break, right? You can't give them more work, but you don't want them there anymore. It's like the worst yard duty ever. So what we would do is we would bring the kids into the cafe, uh, in the gym, we'd give every kid like 12 cards, and we'd start calling cards. We had a table lined up with like 80 stupid prizes. One of them was, some of you I will offend when I say this, when I said stupid prize, is a broken VCR with the Star Wars trilogy and v VHS. Um, we'd have a $2 Starbucks gift card, right? And so kids were doing, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't even get water with that. The kids, the kids are stealing gifts from each other. One of the teachers, you know the reindeer that does this? A uh, teacher, theirs was broken. <laughs> it was all wrapped up with a bow, right? And, and you know what happened when the bell rang? The entire student body goes, it's time to go? Mm. That's changing the way it works. So if you want coaching on the white elephant gift exchange, I want to make that a national phenomenon. Uh, this is my co-principal. This is what he does in passing period. I need the audio back. Yeah, he would just get out there and mess with kids. And you know what he was demonstrating? I'm a real... He's just demonstrating he's a real person, right? That's all. Uh, we, we let kids dress up for Halloween, and this is the way we did it. We never said it. So the night before Halloween, I get a flood of texts. Hey, can we dress up? Yeah, normal dress code. This is what we would get. That's, those are sophomores, Teletubbies. 
Um, this is another one that is great for building culture. If you haven't seen Healing Waters, it's where veterans, um, they sponsor fly fishing trips for veterans who have PTSD. So uh, again, Mike Niehoff would send this video out to the whole student body to watch the healing of veterans who had had PTSD. Do you think that's powerful? Like when Delane talks about dysfunctional kids, where are you on the scale? Do you have both your legs? Maybe your PTSD is not as great as theirs. We're also modeling the idea of peaceful environments and getting solace and getting with yourself. Um, here's a funnier version that Niehoff made. Let's see if I got this. Yo, he, yo, made, yo, he made a rap song. I'm too fitty when I tip scales. I'm too fitty. I'm sharing all the details. Welcome to the rest. The high school movie gets. So he, he had a weekly podcast, but what we did with that was we would have a morning assembly, but it was in every classroom. We would send it out over an audio or a YouTube link. All the kids in the school would do a Google form, 500 kids. The leadership team would go through the answers and pick the best ones. The best ones got meat for lunch. That's hard to find at a high school sometimes. So I would be literally out smoking tri-tip and roasting uh, pork butts. So the best answers got incentivized immediately. And we would have kids write us, write us very long emails and say, I've given you good answers three weeks ago and I'm not getting picked. <laughs> and I would say, we've had an oversight, come and see me. <laughs> this is what our classrooms look like. Where's the teacher, you guys? He's over there, seeing the black shirt? He's working with the kids. The stuff on the round plates is called food. We let kids eat in class. Our MOT didn't realize we were gonna do that. We were a new school, it was too late. The cow was out of the barn. Kids love eating in class, and it creates a chill environment. They can access food. We are not in a prison. I'm not turning them into the cat's diary, okay? Um, constant light touches on social media. So this is our freshman class. They're juicing for their PE final. But that's going out to parents on our Facebook account. Little small things all the time. You know what parents don't want to see on their Facebook account? Dance, um, gift wrap sale, another dance, gift wrap sale send us money. They want to see their kids doing cool stuff. So you're building that culture with parents too, so that parents are backing you up at home. Social media, let them in, but own the whole high ground. We had Twitter and Facebook unblocked on our campus. Guess what happened? Nothing. <laughs> After the first week of excitement, it went back to normal. Um, digital footprint project. We don't do digital citizenship because kids are like, that's for eighth grade. So we just called it Digital Footprint. They didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> Same project. <laughs> uh-huh. Leadership. We had the Bureau of Internal Affairs in our leadership department. They would come into their leadership class, and the, the kids that were leader, uh, internal affairs, they would sit down and get on social media. Their job was to intervene in student affairs on campus using Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. That was part of the leadership class. Okay, so two more variations. This school needs a reboot. Boot now? Yes, no. What am I going to say? If you like this idea, take it back to your school. I'll be glad to share more ideas and resources with you. You could do a smart reboot coming out of Christmas break, right? Smart reboot. And then that also leads to smart end. Do not count down until summer. Do not do that. What you're telling the kids is, I don't want to be here either. Really bad message in class leadership. This is my favorite one. Only four to, that, I wish that teacher spent that much time on lesson planning. <laughs> so, <laughs> cargo cult, right? If I pray to the end of the year, it'll come sooner. Um, smart end, don't wind down. This is the best input from my first principle. Don't wind down, wind up. Don't wind down, wind up. So this is what smart end looks like to me. The second to last week of school, everybody goes to next year. In a K-8 model, sixth grade goes to Seventh grade. They spend three mornings with next year's teacher. Oh, that's fun right there. You do smart start type of activities because what you don't want to do is do the regular beginning of the year activity before the school year ends so they'll be more terrified. And then we do soft assessments. We do uh, practice homework. So our first night of homework is, ready? Everybody take this home and get it signed. It's a family circle comic. Everybody get this signed by a, a responsible person at your house. If I get 100% return, no home, uh, sorry, extra recess tomorrow, which I know is illegal, so we actually call it extended PE. 
Um, guess what my homework return rate was? 100%. They do that three days in a row, and this is what I leave them with. I know you people can take stuff home and bring it back. I expect that in the fall, or it will be ugly. <laughs> um, I like this quote too. When you build the right culture, people will get themselves off the bus. Okay, and sometimes that means crazy parents that need to go to a different school, sometimes. So our results, I love this one, and then this is the last slide. I can't believe Johnny or Susie's actually getting it and doing well at. The project-based learning and all your efforts are paying off in a big way. That's from the county psychologist who's been in that district for 30 years. She felt compelled to send the entire district feedback on how Smart Start worked after the first iteration. And really, that first year in Mariposa, we just pasted it together and got remarkable results. So don't be a cargo cult. Don't build bamboo iPads and hope that the learning is going to get better. Make sure you evaluate me. Here's a key for you. And if you want, uh, all my sessions come with free lifetime tech support. So thanks for coming. Email me, tweet me. I'll see you guys later. Smart start your school and pop off about it. Thank you very much.